Hello, and welcome to the second of a two-part series on how to convert a DVD into an XFID video. For the second portion, we are going to be installing Stack Rips, which you can acquire from one of the links to the right of this video. Stack Rips requires .NET 3.5 from Microsoft. Please download this through Microsoft from the browser window that opens by Stack Rips if you do not have it already installed. Once you have downloaded the installer file, double-click on it to start the installation. Once the installation is started, it will perform a scan. This portion will take a few minutes to complete. Once the initial scan is complete, you will have to click on I have read and accept the terms of the license agreement and click install. This will start the download and installation process. After the download, the installation will start automatically. Once the installation is complete, click exit to finish. It is highly recommended you update with the latest .NET 3.5 service packs available by running Microsoft updates. Now, you simply double click on the Stack Ritz executable installer that we downloaded at our desktop. Click Run. This will uh, bring up the splash screen. We click Next. Click on I accept the license agreement and click Next. This is going to be the location of where the program files are going to install. Simply click Next. And this is going to be if we want to create a desktop icon or quick launch icon. You make your choices and then select Next and this is a summary page just look at it and then click install The program is install and click finish to launch stack rips during the initial run of stack rips you're going to have to set your preferences and download some additional files in this case we're being asked where we want to have our created and old settings to be loaded from in this instance I recommend going with the default of the user directory when asked if you would like for it to check for updates click yes and now you will see the main Stack Rips interface. During this portion of this tutorial, we are going to be replacing the default templates that come with Stack Rips. The templates I recommend you replace the installation version with are ones that I have created. To create these new templates, I tested for many weeks by encoding the same video over and over using different settings within the XVID and audio codecs. Every optimization option has been tested individually and as a group to ensure that I am able to obtain the highest quality video and audio encode when compared to the resulting file size. If you prefer to use your own templates or do not want to use mine, then please ignore this portion of the tutorial. You can obtain my templates through the link on the right side of this video. At this time, go ahead and close the Stack Rips program so we can replace the templates. Once you have downloaded the StackRips template.zip, simply double click on the file to open it up. Contained within the zip are three files, cartoon template, default template, and the location.txt. The default template will be used to replace the current default template that is installed with StackRips. The cartoon template is there in case you are going to be encoding any videos that are cartoon in nature. Double click on the location.txt, copy it, you go to a run prompt by clicking start and going to run and pasting it in this location and pressing enter. You've now opened up the directory that stores your template files. Simply copy the files from the stackrits template.zip and override the ones that are inside the default template directory. Double click on stackrips quick launch icon and now we have our new stackrips interface. Now let's click on view and go to options and we're going to have some options in here we're going to change. Now because this is the first time you've loaded Stack Rips, you're going to have some tool tips that pop up. Feel free to go through and read all these, find out all the information that you want to. A lot of the info that's in here is going to be helpful for you in the future if you want to change anything. And once you're done, go ahead and close those windows out. Because this is my default template, it's going to end up sticking the target directory on the D partition going into a videos folder. Now we don't want to do that with ours so we're going to go ahead and change that to the C drive and you can have it go to the root of C like I'm going to here or wherever you so choose. Okay so now we're going to click on source which again is going to open up an information pane. Uh, we simply close this out. We're going to click on single or merge. This is usually what we want to use. So go ahead and click on this now and now we're going to try to locate the actual directory where we stuck the file earlier. Now if you remember we stuck it in the alien directory so let's go ahead and double click on the alien folder and you'll see all of our VOB files here. So you're going to have to select all of them. Usually I just click someplace in the box and hit control A and then click open 
Now you can see all of our VOBs have been added to this configuration here. Go ahead and click OK. Uh, once again, another tooltip is going to pop up on us like they always do. Go ahead and close that out. Now it's going to tell us that, hey, we need to download some programs. These are going to be necessary to actually complete the work. This particular one's AVI Synth. So let's go ahead and go up to the top and we can see this little section that's called download right up here so we just go ahead and click the download button and it starts automatically and starts going through the process for us uh, the joy about it is it does it all automatically so now that we're done with that we wait a few seconds because sometimes it'll pop up more and in this case it looks like it popped up another install that it wants us to do so it's going to go ahead and complete this installation as you can see it's a little large at 2.7 megabytes but still definitely not too bad and once the download is complete we will continue with the installation once the download window goes away sometimes it takes a little while for things to pop up well this one comes up and we click on I agree now we click on next click on install and we wait for the installation to continue once it's done we click on close and click finish and it's going to let us know if there's anything available still and there is so uh, we need to go to the top of the list which is going to be our autocrop and click on it and once we're done once again we go to the top and click on download download button is our friend download it installs in the background we next go to B suite so all we have to do is once again click on it real simple real easy to do on this go to the top and click download it'll automatically download the file and install it in the background uh, sometimes you have to input stuff most of the time you don't have to with B suite you don't have to though and this one completes for us we click on media info is the next one we have to do and then go up and click on download goes through the download process for us and next we click on the virtual dub mod same thing download button he's our little friend And once the download is done, we're going to have our dialog box pop back up. And now we need to install our video codec, which is going to be an XVID. So go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to go up and, as always, click on the download button, which starts the download process. Now this particular codec requires an installation process, so let's go ahead and click on the next button at the bottom. And then we're going to accept the license agreement. So go ahead and click on I accept and then click next. And just uh, information about XFID, click next. Where it's going to be installed, just click next. Default's usually good. Uh, program group, click next, next, and install. And it goes to the installation process. And click finish button. Now on this screen it's going to tell us that all of our applications have been installed properly so we go ahead and click OK and then we close out this window. And this is pretty common. It's going to start a new program up in the bottom and we don't have it so we have to download it. So let's click our little friend. And everything's now installed and happy at the moment so we click OK, click close and we let it do its thing. Now DG Index is going to be working in the background and it's going to give us some information about our file in just a few seconds. And once DG Index is done it's going to tell us that we need to download a DG Decode. So we go ahead and go up to the top and click on download and it goes to the download process and once again installs in the background. Once again all applications are good so we go and click OK and then we click close and once again it's going to perform work in the background for us. Now we're going to be requested to download VSRIP. This is going to be for the subtitles. Go ahead and go up to the top, click on download. It downloads the program automatically and installs it. Click OK and go ahead and click close and once again it's going to be performing work in the background and this portion is actually going to be extracting the subtitles.